This is the Sales Bevel Podcast, episode 212, How to Read a Buyer's Personality, an interview with Alex Swire Clark. Welcome to Sales Babble, the podcast that shares selling secrets for non sellers. And now, your host, Pat Helmers. Hello, Sales Babblers. This is Pat Helmers. And before our clients were clients, they were strangers. And we didn't know anything about them. We didn't know at all what their personality type was about. And because of that, you don't necessarily know the best way to persuade them. Now, they've done some studies on this, and they found that for the most part, 70% of the people out there are people-oriented, while 30% of the people are all about facts and figures. So when you first meet a stranger and you're trying to persuade them, you put yourself at risk of saying the wrong thing. What do they say? You only get one chance of making a good first impression? Well, as sellers, it's hard enough getting the lead and turning into a conversation as it is. Let's not squander it. Which is why I had Alex Wire Clark come visit us here on Sales Babble today. He's a certified human behavior expert, and he's the podcast host of the Rapport Advantage. And they often talk about sales. In fact, I was a guest on that podcast. And if you're if you subscribe to Sales Babble email, or if you look at us on social media, you, you would have seen that that was actually published about a week or two ago. In this episode, we're going to talk about a very practical topic on how to read personalities, how to read a person's temperament, and to adjust your selling style so that you can build rapport and credibility. So, with no further ado, let's get to it. Welcome, Alex. Are you ready to babble? Indeed I am, sir. Alex, you are the host of the Rapport Podcast, and you are also a certified human behavior expert, right? That is correct. And you and I met, I don't even know how you and I met online. I think we were chatting on LinkedIn, and we got ourselves all connected up. And, um, and I was interested in having you on the podcast because I know you see value for teamwork, avoiding drama, and increasing productivity You know, through having a better understanding of behavior. But how does that... But how does that apply to sales? Well, it's, it's a good question. And in terms of sales, we all come with our own set of biases. We all come with our own set of um, temperament um, yep. in terms of what, what, we, what we normally go off of. And so um, when you talk about personality styles and, and how we differ from one another, there are so many different things that affect that. You know, you're talking about your upbringing, birth order, IQ. I mean, all that stuff factors in, but, but typically – when we are looking at um, selling to someone, a prospect, if you will, first thing I want to grab onto is is their temperament. So if I can figure out what their temperament is, kind of like are they a dominant uh, style? Are they an inspiring kind of influential style? Are they more supportive or are they more of a cautious style? Then I can figure out, okay, what, what question is really going to drive them when it's all said and done? Uh, because if I get that question answered, then I will be able to build trust and build that rapport, and then the sales process will be a lot smoother. So uh, when we talk to companies and organizations about personality styles, we use the DISC profile um, because it's, it's very simple to understand. You, you've got your D dominant style, which is, are your outgoing task-oriented folks. You've got your high I style, your inspiring style, which are your outgoing and people-oriented folks. Um, you know, they, they've never met a person that uh, hasn't become an instant friend. Uh, they'll talk to a stop sign. Um, you know, they don't need to go to a party. They are the party. Um, your high D styles, your dominant styles are those, you know, big, big gestures. Uh, let's get things done. We're going to be direct. I've got 45 goals today and we're going to get all 45 of them done. Come heck or high water. That's just the way it's going to work. Um, and so those are your more of your outgoing styles, your reserve styles. Uh, you start with your S's, which are, are your reserved and people-oriented folks, uh, your high S. They are the supportive kind of folks. They're very steady, status quo. Um, they don't get really bent out of shape about too many things, not a lot of drama. Uh, and then you've got your high C or your cautious style, um, which are your very much your analytical folks, your folks who like numbers, process. Um, and so for each one of those styles, they have a different question that matters to them. So in a sales situation... If I'm talking to a high D or a dominant style, their primary concern is about the what. 
what's this product going to do? What's it going to do for me? What's it going to do for my organization? What is it going to be the end result? What's going to be the benefit? Your high eyes are going to be asking uh, about who, who's going to be involved. Uh, is this going to be my sales team? Is this going to be my team? Um, are we going to be interacting with others? Am I going to be meeting with other salespeople? Where are the connection is going to be there from a personal perspective? Your reserve folks, your S's, are going to be asking about how. How is this going to impact my company? How is this going to impact my people? They are primarily concerned about the impact of people in their company or in their organization. Is this going to increase the number of people that I have? Is this going to eliminate positions? That's going to you know, involve me having to talk to families and things like that. So they're going to be very concerned about that. And then the C's are going to ask that question, why? Why is this going to be of a benefit? Why does this matter? You know, why, why is this going to be better than what we have right now? So if you are able to, to know nothing else about a person um, in that situation from a sales standpoint, if you, know those, if you can identify what those styles are, then you can find that primary motivator for okay. those folks. Now, I think we jumped into this just a bit too quick here. Because I want to really explain to the audience, this is a model, isn't it, for understanding a person's behaviors, right? Correct. So the this model of kind of like Myers Briggs, right? Correct. Different correct. types there, of people, right? That's that's correct. That's correct. So you've got Myers Briggs, you've got DISC. There's animal behaviors. There's the um, Greek model, which is you know has words like sanguine and and um, phlegmatic and things like that. So you know going all the way back to the ages. So this is just a way of understanding human behavior and trying to identify patterns in people. And there's things, if I understand what you're saying, right, there's things that you can observe in people. Just, you can somehow plop them somewhere. And, and people have, I'm assuming, people have various levels of each of these, right, De, uh, for each of these attributes, right? They're yes, not, yes. People aren't just yeah. all one thing or another, right? That, that's correct, Pat. You're spot on. Everyone is a unique blend of all four of these. No one is just... Oh, I'm just a high eye, and that's all I have. Um, everyone is a, is a unique um, blend of them, and so sometimes when we call a do, a, a a dominant style the high D, um, what we mean by that is when you take an assessment um, on a scale of a hundred, anything that you score fifty or above, that means that you have that trait as one of your more dominant traits. So you could be a high DC. You could be an IS, you could be a DCI, um, you could you know, have three of them that are dominant for you. Um, anything that is above that median, that 50 percentile basically on an assessment, means that, that you are predominant in that particular uh, style. So, yes, we're all a unique combination of those. All right, so we got this model here. How do salespeople leverage that? Like, it's not like I can like give somebody an assessment and say, sir... I got some awesome products and services I really want to I want to pitch to you. But before I do that, I'd like to get a better understanding of you here. Could you fill out this form? <laughs> that, 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 that ain't going to happen, is it? That would be great. <laughs> that, that would be great, but that typically doesn't happen. I would um, think so. Uh, you know, heaven forbid I, I could get them to fill out a form. No, what we what we do is we, uh, we teach folks how to uh, read folks in terms of how they're dressed. Uh, so you can look at uh, someone's tie, someone's shoes. Um, you know, you've got that, that power suit kind of person. You've got that more relaxed person. Um, you've got the, you know, flaming, uh, taco tie that someone's wearing. And then you've got, uh, someone who's, you know, got two or three pins in their pocket or whatever else. And they're prepared for, you know, to, to write things down and that kind of thing. So you teach folks about how to look for what they're wearing. You can look in a person's office, look at their office decor, and that will tell you a lot about someone. You can actually, Pat, we teach folks how to read folks through email. Uh, and if you can give me a second, kind of expound on that. Um, typically, uh, when you're dealing with the different styles, they will respond in a different way. So for example, if you send, uh, someone that says, did you get the proposal? Um, a high D being that doer direct person, they want to going to, they're going to want to get in and get out as fast as they can. So they'll say something like, yes, I did reviewing it soon. No pleasantries, no, oh, Hey, thanks for sending it. Nothing. It's just, here's the facts. Bam. They're in and out. Um, to maximize that efficiency. A high eye will, will usually have some type of um, punctuation marks that are uh, exclamatory in nature, use of emojis, even in professional stuff will be, will be there. So his or her answer to that question might be, um, yes, I sure did, looks awesome, hashtag, you know, whatever else, or looks awesome, smiley face, can't wait to see it, or can't wait to open it up. Uh, the S's, um, will be 
uh, concerned about the timeliness of the situation, and they'll be concerned that of what your opinion of them is based upon you're sending that. So did you get the proposal? Their answer would be, yes, I did. Um, uh, sorry if I haven't gotten back to you at this point in time. I will be getting to it as soon as possible and look forward to it. Um, so they're more almost apologetic uh, in some respects in terms of making sure that you're not offended that that you had to that they had to ask you, did you receive the proposal? And then, of course, the C's, um, they're all about that why. Uh, and they're going to say in terms of did you get the proposal, they're going to be more like, yes, I received your proposal. Um, I will be looking at it by 11 p.m. tomorrow. Expect my response by 3 p.m. on Friday. So they're going to give you more than you necessarily asked for, but they're going to be very um, clear in terms of what their response is going to be. So those are, again, just typical. And of course, you have to, to see a pattern. You're going to want to look for two or three emails to make sure that pattern exists. But that's a beautiful way of being able to tell, okay, I kind of know where this person sits as, as a general rule. So when I communicate to them um, in response, I need to be speaking their language and, and communicate to them with, again, as a high D. I'm not going to go back and give them flowery language. Right. I so I, so I sent you some them. email. Did you did, did you look at my email heart? Do you... What's what would you characterize myself? Well, that's a good question, and and I wasn't trying to. You, you may not remember. I, I, don't know. Not, I am you know, putting I, you I on the spot. To I am. You know, I, so. Let me be supportive here. I get that I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> not a bit, Pat. Not a bit. <laughs> it's your show, and if you want to put me on the spot, that's, that's what you do. Um, and uh, you know, there's a podcast that we're going to talk about a little bit later where you're going to be on my show, and so uh, yeah, we're getting... she will be on. She will be on the other foot, my friend. Yeah, that, that, that's that's my last question right here. Anyway, so okay, so we got these profile. So we got this ability to like maybe read people. How can what are ways that salespeople can leverage it? Well, again, you want to you want to come in when you're trying to build that rapport um, and make sure that you're focusing on the language that, that, that the other person or persons there speak. So, for example, if you're, if you're talking about, um, you know, uh, Brian Tracy's model of uh, sales, you know, step two is uh, build trust and rapport. The way that a high D or a high C builds trust versus like you, because, you know, you go back to Zig Ziglar, you know, people buy from you because they, you know, like value and trust, which you and I have had a great conversation about that offline. One of my favorite quotes. Uh, um, we've had it, we, you know, we, we engaged in that a little bit. Um, D's and C's have to trust you before they like you. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that you've got to come at them with facts. You've got to come at them with, here's going to be the end result of what we're going to talk about today and what it means to your company before you start telling them, you know, you know, the joke about the guy on the plane or whatever else that, that happened because you're, you're going to lose them at that point. Facts are what's going to drive them to build trust. And then from there, when they say, oh, OK, so you're going to show me what my ROI is good. OK, I see that. Oh, here's a testimonial from another client where you boosted their revenue by 12.3 percent. OK, I'm down with that. And you showed me a, a source in the, in the PowerPoint that points me to that knowledge. Not It's just not hearsay. Um, so, OK, I'm down. OK, so all those little things are building trust, which is ultimately going to have them like you, which is going to be you know, going to be key for that sales. Uh, sales cycle. The other side of that, the I's and the S's, yep. uh, those people, those people oriented folks, they have to like you before they trust you. So those people are the ones that you're going to want to make feel comfortable. Those are the people that, you, you know, a, a joke in the beginning to kind of break the ice, that's going to be appropriate for them. And once they do that, oh man, I like this guy. This guy, he knows what he's talking about. That's going to build that trust for you. And so from there on, when you're adding facts to that, that's only cementing that trust in place. You don't have to, to get there. So you need to approach those two different sides of the graph a little bit differently in terms of what do I start with and to get that rapport building going and then trust will follow uh, from the, either the opposite side. What is there? Is there different other kinds of combinations? Maybe people who are supportive and dominant maybe. Yeah. And so so is there that, is, is there like a is there like uh, an example for like all different combinations of these people maybe? Yeah, there there can be. Um, but but when you're talking about blending, let's say I'm we're talking about an IS, uh, which is what my style is. That's a double people oriented person. So I is is people oriented. S is people oriented. So we're talking about a person who's doubly people oriented. They're going to be really not caring at all about your details. Um, the salesperson in that situation, they're 
people skills is what's going to make that sale. Because what in that first two minutes, if that high IS likes you, I mean, you could be selling ice to you know Eskimos at that point. They're really not going to care because they're your your charisma and charm is going to take over, and that's going to drive the sale. Um, versus, let's say you've got a a CS blend. Well, a CS blend is doubly reserved because remember they're both reserved. S is reserved in people, C is reserved in task oriented. If you're dealing with that, then you ha- you can't come out of the gate being fiery. You can't come out of the gate trying to tell jokes. You're going to have to come out of the gate a little more soft-spoken, and the pace of your presentation needs to be substantially slower. Diction needs to slow down. The height of you know, the peaks and valleys in the way that you use your voice inflection need to be a little more stable. I can't go crazy, and I can't, you know, because that's going to go, whoa, well, that's, that's kind of offsetting to them. So there are tons of, you know, different applications. It depends on the blend. And so those are two examples of the, that you can uh, incorporate pretty easily. This, this may not be able to answer this, but is there famous people out there that people have, that, that kind of fit within these and you kind of know off the top of your head as examples? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I try not to go too politically crazy um, uh, when we talk about a podcast, cause that, you know, that leads to kind of, all kind of, kind of crazy issues. But if you look at a high D personality, um, somebody like Patton uh, comes to mind, George Patton. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, get in people's faces. Um, you know they're gonna they're gonna fear us and and you know get beaten up and that kind of thing. Judge Judy's another high D example um, that you can use. Um, cut to the chase, get to the point. Don't give me all the fluff behind the background story. Just did they steal from you or not? Okay, boom, judgment, and she's out. Um, for your high eye styles, uh, Robin Williams, the late Robin Williams, comes to mind. Uh, was just a tremendous, um, spontaneous. Um, improvisational, just genius. Uh, and eyes are really gifted in, in that regard. So in sales, having a high eye is a tremendous gift because you're quick to think on your feet um, and, and able to spontaneously react to questions that are given to you that you may not have been prepared for originally. Another high eye could be uh, someone like Oprah, who inspires others to give back to the community, to you know, to help out others, that kind of thing. Of course, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. was a uh, tremendous high eye. Uh, wasn't the the crazy comedian that Robin Williams was, but of course inspired a nation um, and and those all around him. From a high S standpoint, uh, Andy Griffiths is, is a fictional character, uh, but uh, you know just kind of sweet as honey, kind, always try to you know problem solve without having to use violence. You know, obviously he didn't carry a gun. Um, Mother Teresa, another example of a high S. In history, always served others. Was was never about her. It was always about what could she do for others. Um, and then, of course, uh, high C's. Um, you're going to have folks like uh, like Sherlock Holmes. You know, those critical thinkers, always analyzing. Um, and to some point, you know, putting people away from them uh, because the process is more important necessarily than the people. And so, you know, high C's have to be careful with that. Sometimes, uh, Marie Curie, uh, Madame Curie, was uh, another. Um, Famous example of a high C uh, on, uh, on from the female perspective, uh, you know, just constantly. If you go back and, and read about her bio, she was, you know, she pushed people away and, and, and things like that for the process because she was so goal centered and, and driven on. I'm going to to discover, you know, this particular element. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this from a scientific perspective. So um, so those and are, I can see know, some of these people being dominant, too, though. I mean, I mean. Um, like 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 Mother Teresa was, yeah, she's focused on servicing others, but at the same time, she was very particular about how things had to be done. <laughs> and uh, it was known That's for being a pit bull of like getting things done. Right, right. And so when when an S, uh, that's that's, that's a, a a good a segue. Um, S is you know they're kind, supportive. Um, they're the glue of any organization, really, and they're and they're wonderful to have on your team. They're fiercely loyal. Um, and if you ever question them in terms of or talk a, 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 in a not positive way about their friends or their family, then they turn into those pit bulls like you're talking about. They are they will be fiercely um, guarding your, their f- friends, family, their causes, um, the things that, that uh, are most important to them. So they are very much laid back and reserved and, and you won't hear you know, two words from them until you say something bad about let's say that they support a children's organization and, you know, I never give that charity because they spend all their money on, 
on you know office supplies. And well, let me show you the numbers, and they will step up and step in. So yeah, Mother Teresa was like that. She was fiercely committed to the poor and um, didn't want to hear any excuses from anybody about why they couldn't be served. So let's let's kind of wrap this up. If we could give your the listeners here uh, one piece of advice that they could go and take action on this week to somehow leverage this the, this knowledge, what would you recommend, Alex? So in terms of leveraging the knowledge, um, reading using the email to try to to, to figure that out uh, with people's styles, I think it's just is yep. not only uh, yep, yep, yep. is you know a positive thing and and very tangible, but it's also fun. Um, you know, you just kind of go. Oh, I kind of wonder, well, the sort of this, that, and the other, and you can get a read on people. The second thing would be to do uh, would be to uh, go uh, just just you know, if you can go to my site, you can. Um, that's fine. And just look at a graph and look at the percentages of the population. Um, and so the majority of the population uh, on the planet is going to be reserved, and they're going to be people oriented. So if you use those tools and understand, I don't know anything about Bob. I'm going to meet with Bob today. If I have to guess, just from a factual statistical standpoint, he's going to be reserved. He's going to be people oriented just because that's the way the numbers break down. And so I'm going to have to reach out to him. I'm going to have to be a little more dominant in my conversation early on, at least until I find out that he's not those two things. So understanding that I need to be proactive in the way I approach people, um, that would be one thing. And then, of course, the, the email side of that. Excellent. Why don't you tell us about your podcast? Uh, the report, the report advantage podcast. Um, we discuss uh, the disc profile. Uh, we spend our basically our first six episodes talking about the the lexicon and making sure people are aware of what's going on there. And then we break down into uh, practical applications, everything from how it's used in the C suite to you know more about sales. Uh, we talk about uh, job benchmarking and uh, job matching. We also talk about uh, you know how to read people more effectively. We talk about workplace conflict a little bit and how to avoid that. We also talk about uh, upcoming podcasts about retention and how it's important to you know communicate with folks uh, based upon their personality style so that you can not only find out how to hire the best talent but how to keep them. And of course, you know as we know, you know people are your most important resource in a company. Do you have a co-host or do you bring on guests or? I do. Or, or, I is do. It just, I, I, or is it just you pontificating? It's uh, no. Me pontificating <laughs> would be like, I mean, that would die fast. Uh, there's not too many thoughts that uh, enter my brain, much less leave my brain. Um, no, I have a, uh, I have a kind of a partner in crime, Liz Parker. Uh, she's a uh, strategic planning expert, and she's also an expert in, in disc. Uh, and so she and I ping pong some things back and forth uh, with one another. And of course, we do have guests on from time to time. Uh, to, to, to talk about sales, to talk about uh, negotiation, to talk about using this information and, and how to practically apply it in, in the business world. But we also have had questions um, from our listeners about uh, more personal things, uh, such as, you know, this is great information. I want to apply this with my kids at home. You know, when's, when is a good time to get them started on that and things like that. So we don't, we don't brush away the personal questions. We, you know, actually, you know, encourage folks to send those in. Um, but we are, quote, in the business section in iTunes uh, and in our other app, you know, platforms. But we do answer personal questions as well to try to, again, we're trying to prove people's lives and in, in, in their relationships, both personal and professional. Excellent. So how can people, what's the name of the podcast? How can people find it? Uh, it's the Rapport Advantage podcast. If you go to uh, www.alexswireclark.com slash podcast, you'll find it there. And, of course, we're on iTunes, Spotify, Twitter, Stitcher, Google Play, pretty much you know most formats out there you can find us. And if people want to find you, you're on – LinkedIn. I'm uh, yeah, I'm on I'm on I'm on the web somewhere uh, at uh, reportadvantage.com or you can go to alexswirecclark.com and uh, I am a speaker and uh, CEO so if you need to uh, have any of these concepts applied into your organization I do keynotes, we do workshops, all that kind of fun stuff and be happy to help you. Excellent. Hey Alex, is there anything you want to give away? Sure, sure Pat. Um, if folks come over to my website uh, and use the SpeakPipe app just to leave me a voicemail, or they can email me at contact at alexswireclark.com and just put in the subject line, sales babble coupon. I'll send them a, a coupon for 15% off any assessment on our site. Uh, and that'll, that way, uh, if you go there right now um, and take a, one of our basic assessments, they're less than $13 a piece. So 15% off, you're talking about knowing who you are for 11 bucks. Um, makes a lot of sense. Uh, so, uh, again, that's um, just a, send me an email, contact at alexswireclark.com, uh, and put in the subject line, sales babble coupon. Excellent. Alex, thanks for coming here. Thanks for visiting us here in sales babble. I really, this is, this is, this is, this is just a terrific subject. 
it's it's fascinating, and I, I love to talk about it. It's uh, one of those things where you know it's it's passionate for me because it helped me save my marriage, and so I'm I'm trying to help people uh, save their own personal and professional uh, relationships. And it's uh, if I can touch one person in a positive way, man, I've done my job. Wow, that sounds like a whole episode in itself. A little bit. <laughs> 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 Alex, thanks for visiting us here in Sales Babble. My pleasure. The first time I was exposed to Myers Briggs, I was fascinated by the idea that we could actually categorize people and how they and how they approach things and how they think, because it's actually something that I personally saw, you know, in, in, in interacting with people. And the fact that you could somehow build a model around this, I found absolutely absolutely fascinating because if you want to help people you got to communicate with them and the only way you can do that is if you can kind of understand where they're coming from and that's that's the power of understanding a personality type here on sales babble we've talked about bank and disc and strength finders um i think it's really practical knowledge so i highly recommend that you take up alex's uh, offer and uh, actually do an assessment on yourself and you can find the links on how to do that in the show notes at www.salesbabble.com slash 212. That's 212. And there you can also find the back catalog for other episodes that we've done in regarding to personality, personality types. Next week, we're going to have Doug Vigliotti on the podcast. He's a sales consultant and he's author of the book, The Sales Person Paradox. Doug's going to talk about a way to kind of frame your solutions to your customers in a way that they just can't say no. Um, fun stuff. Really, really enjoyed the conversation, and I think you will too. Got a question, got a comment? Don't hesitate to reach out and connect with me. Go on the website, click the Babble Me button, or send me an email. All of this stuff is in the, uh, I'm easy to find. <laughs> I'm on LinkedIn all day long, off and on, so that's an easy way for you to connect with me, too. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out and ask. But that's all I got for today. Until next week, take care and have a highly successful and profitable selling day. Thank you for listening to the Sales Babble Podcast. Find us at www.salesbabble.com. Thank mm-hmm. you.